Okay, so I think it's recording. All right, so Jacob your host, we're going to be detailing how to do Fluent Project 3. Okay, for just a quick overview of this project, we're going to be doing the flow around a cylinder at different viscosities. Okay, the first viscosity has to be less than one. Okay, and we're going to be doing this in the Fluent in this uh, software to begin you open up your workbench as you can see and to begin we're going to drag a new fluid flow project here okay and then to begin we have to start with our geometry we're going to make sure that's in 2d we're going to open this up in our design modeler i'm going to be using similar values that i used in the experiment um, I'm going to probably just make them a little prettier, so that way it's a little easier to explain. So to begin, I'm going to centimeter origin, switch your units to centimeters, worked well for me, just because I wanted a small cylinder for my case. Um, now we're going to sketch and just pick a circle, choose the origin of choice, we're going to begin. Now for my project, I chose five centimeters to begin with. So that's what we're going to do here. It makes it easy when you're computing Reynolds numbers with five milliseconds per second, I mean meters per second velocity, you'll see later on. Now we have to draw our rectangular specimen around. That is going to capture the flow. Okay. Let's just mention that. I'll make this. This you oh let's undo that. I don't know what just happened there. Now you want this to be in the middle, obviously, right? So the way I figured out how to do that was to then click that little point, this line. And now make it half the height of the vertical, and it'll be centered perfectly. Cool little trick I found. You guys are free to use that. Now you click the drag component. We can just move this a little bit. Now I'm really not liking how small this is looking, but you know, let's try it. It should work. So that's really all you have to do for geometry. Oh, actually, I have to skip the part. My bad. You go back to this. You're going to want to go concepts, surfaces from sketch. Click sketch one, apply, generate. Just like how we did for the flat plate project, very similar. Nothing really strange to do there. Okay, looks good. Now we can go to mesh. Let's update that. Just make sure nothing funky happened. Opens. It followed. Awesome. Okay. Good to know. Okay. So now we'll go mesh insert method. Click the geometry. Apply. Hold on. Let's find it. Good. Generate. Let's see. Okay. It's going to look good. Let's switch that up a little bit. I want some more dots. So. Switch that element size to, let's make it two centimeters, see what happens. Okay, generate. Sometimes if you pick it a little too small, it can take a while to mesh. For my project, I did make it small, but I wanted just a little bit more meshing going on. But for the sake of the video, we can choose a little smaller. Let's refine this now. We'll bump this up to three, as we did in other projects. Generate. Let's see what's going on here. Ready. Awesome. I'm liking that a lot. Awesome. So now we just need to name our boundary conditions and whatnot. So similar to other projects, we're going to click Edge Select. Then we start to name with N after you control, control, N, symmetry. N. This should look very familiar with the other projects. And now since there's only one object in the middle, there's no upper wall, lower wall, or whatnot. This is just going to be wall. Okay. 
Actually, let's double check. Let's make sure that's right. No point in rushing through this, right? And the reason why you don't want to rush that is because that's done for the rest of the project. If you're just going to change the viscosity like I did, you can keep that geometry and mesh just as you wish. All right, so now we move on to setup. For setup, we run double precision. With the student, you can run four processes. Let's open that up. Let's hope we have some licenses. Unreal when it makes that happen. I swear. Okay. Done. Awesome. Now we can work. Okay. So you want to open up your models. Go to Viscous. So we got to change a couple things. Now for the model, we're really going to want K Epsilon 2, just like Project 2. Enhance this wall treatment. So now we can see our pressure gradient effects. Awesome. Now for our materials, this is going to be what we change. Okay. Now I kept the density at 1.2. And so for this, we want a viscosity less than one for our first case. So if you do your Reynolds, your density times our inlet velocity, which I'm going to set to five, times our diameter, 0 0.05. And we want it to equal one, right? So if you divide this by one, your minimum viscosity can be 0 0.3. Okay. Well, that's actually, yeah. So let's pick a viscosity of, of one. Why not? Let's try one. Okay, yeah, equals 0 0.3, perfect. So our first viscosity I'm going to choose is going to be one. That makes our Reynolds number 0 0.3, less than one, perfect. Well, I think that's what I used for mine as well. I did, awesome. Okay, so now you have that set. The other things are going to be constant throughout this project, okay? As far as your uh, boundary additions go, you don't change much besides the inlet, which I'm going to make five meters per second. Close. Awesome. Good. So now I think we may be good. I want you to go to our reference values. I like computing from the inlet. Okay. And our awesome, awesome, our length is just going to be our diameter. And see, is that okay? Now for the area, it's going to be pi divided by four times our length squared. Zero, 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 nine, six. Good to go. We can initialize. Run the calc. Thousands. Make sure this thing does it all right. And now we wait. <clears throat> this one takes a little while, but. If you're watching this, feel free to skip through it. There's not much that goes on here.
Hmm. Hmm. It's there. Now, oh, let's continue. So for your report, you're going to want to tabulate your forces. And your real forces you can calculate on the wall. It's going to be your precious, viscous, total coefficients and whatnot. Yeah. Check them out here. As long as they're positive, this seems about right. Now, the large magnitude you're seeing in this viscous over here, I mean, in the coefficients, is probably due to the rectangular um, surrounding that we made. Professor Osby explained if it's a little too small, it sometimes can push and force everything down through. So might be a little bit off. That's okay, though. Let's take this. We're going to continue now. Now that your solution is good, tabulate those forces. Open up your results. Okay. So, the other part of this project, once you're velocity contouring. Spell wrong. It's okay. You guys get it. No solution. Velocity. Let's check that bad boy out. Let's bump this up to 50. Okay. That's looking all right. Now, let's check our pressure. Okay. It's looking right. Now, we're going to go streamline. This is the important part of the project. This is really where you start to see, like, if what you're doing is right. Okay. I believe it's like symmetry one, actually, is going to be where you start from. You can bump this up to 100. But I did. Awesome. So it is starting to drag down there. That is just a typical issue. That's okay. Um, as you can see, we do see a lot of symmetrical wake around that is what we targeted okay that is looking about right and now if you just want to switch up your legend a little bit you can go horizontal appearance fixed apply have that just in the right spot okay good screenshot this tabulate it that is your case one now moving on to case number two we open up our setup Now we want an RE equal to 40, okay? That means we're going to have to go back to our air. We're going to have to change our viscosity. You can calculate this quickly. If you want to know the target viscosity, just plug it in at the bottom. Okay, so if we want it to equal 40 exactly these parameters, we find out 0 0.0075, change, create, close. With everything else right, we're then going to initialize. Run the calc. Hopefully it doesn't take as long. Awesome. Yay. Check your forces again. Make sure they're positive. They should start to be a little bit lower than our past. Okay, so you know you're coming in the right direction, and that's what we see. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and as you go through each case, you should see it start to just decrease a little bit in magnitude every time. Okay, tabulate that again. And here I'm just going to open up our results now. Let's 
to re-update that stream one. Let's see what's going on. Now for this one, it should be about asymmetrical. As you can see here, it's about symmetrical. The target here. We wanted to do it. Just like that. Okay, you want a symmetrical weight circulating here at an RE of 40. That's kind of what we're getting here. Okay. And just to make this a little bit prettier, really bump up these numbers. See, we see how they're kind of stacked right on top of each other. Okay, as you can see here, we have a symmetrical weight. Awesome. You can turn off that velocity if you want to just look at the streamline itself. Sorry, let's make this a little better. Perfect. See, that's what you want for your RE of 40. These two done. Now, if you just want to tabulate your other needs here, you have your pressure. Your pressure going on here. And now we can look at our velocity. Screenshot these. Throw them in your report. Let's open up this workbench again. We are going back to our setup. All right, now for this case, we want an RE in between, I believe it's 100 to 200. And then we should see an alternate vortex formation, okay? So let's go with. 150, all right? Then go back to your calculator. Switch your viscosity for your Reynolds number within the equation. You figure out your target viscosity. It comes out to be 0 0.002 to get a Reynolds of 150. Change, create, close, close. Now we can go to our reports, forces. Oh, wait. We gotta run it first. I'm gonna skip some steps here. Can't be doing that. Initial run this count. Our new Reynolds of 150. We should see some changes here. Boom. Done. Awesome. Now, as we said, you should just see a little drop every time. So you know you're on the right track. Great. And as we go up, we can see that the magnitude is dropping. First case. Second case. Third case. Awesome, guy. Okay. Awesome. That's what we want to see. Bench. No results. Let's check out. Velocity profile shouldn't look too different. As we're going to see, it's the streamline where we start to see the real differences. It's taking a little while to show us though. Okay, so you see it's just a little different here. Let's get this fixed. Okay, so now we're really seeing a big difference now, right? So the big opening, small opening, they're starting to offset each other. That's what you want when you're looking at these cases. So that's how you know you're in the right area. Okay. So tabulate that. Open. Lost the contour. Bang. While you're here, switch it back to the pressure. Should be looking real dense in the front again. Perfect. We see the wake behind it. That's what you want. Okay. Where you see high velocity, you're going to see low pressure coming right off when you rip out. You see a decrease in area, increase in velocity. Perfect. Okay. Screenshot those. Tabulate. On the case. It's D now, I believe. We're almost there. All right. So. Let's just see what they want for this case. Now, we want an RE between 400 and 300,000. Okay. So, let's go with maybe 
Pretty sure I did 50,000. I think that's what we're going to do here. Like I said, just keep doing the same thing, guys. Get that calculator open. Density, velocity, distance, divide it by your Reynolds number that you want, then you get your viscosity that you want. So let's go 50,000. See, 6 times 10 to the negative 6. Because one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. Change, create. Sixteen and then six. Awesome. Let me just make sure everything's been staying the same as this. Awesome. I'll run this calculation back. So, see, if this is falling right, guys, you should see again the magnitude of your forces should drop again and they should all be positive. So, we should see them just be a little bit less than 1.1 in one area. And the viscous should be less than the one we saw for the last case. So, perfect. Just drop as you can see. If you want to just do a little bit more proof, we can look at it here. These values. Awesome. They're dropping. Good to see. Refresh for me. Refresh. Now we should see again, we should see a wake up pretty similar to that. The large radials numbers now should start to get interesting. Now we should see when we open up this streamline, there should be a large wake stream behind it. Okay. Open up that streamline. Awesome. Now, what we're seeing now, we're going to open up. Again, with a larger Reynolds number, and that should be getting tighter. As you can see, that's just going to keep going. It's awesome, 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 awesome. And honestly, I want to see even more. Let's make this thousand. Education purposes. Let's look at it. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Looks good. Awesome. And if you want to double check, you have a turbulent weight. Now, you're going to make it larger than 300,000. Let's just add another 10 to that. Let's make it 500,000 right now. And now we should see it get a little tighter next time than what we're seeing here. Okay. Back to our setup. Last case. Okay. Now again, if you want to figure out how to get that, it's probably just going to be another magnitude of negative 10. So if you want a target of 500,000, yes, it's 6 e to the negative 7, so let's just add a 0. Change key. You know what? Let's make this 1 million. Wow. Let's really see it get tight here. So now we're going to have a Reynolds number of 1 million. Let's see it. Double check your refs. Good. Let's so run this calculation. That we should see very tiny forces now. I think I might have 
confused it a little bit, making the Reynolds number so high, but. Sorry about that. I, I just personally want to see it, so. Like I said, if we're doing it right, it should be tighter than what we saw from this case, okay? Almost there. Almost there. All right, science follows. Should be really tiny. Okay, so we're seeing the pressure jumped a little bit. I have a feeling something might have went wrong. I'm actually going to redo this. We might have went a little bit over there. Let's bring this back to D. This is going to make the Ramos number of 500,000. Let's bring this calculation. You might have went a little overboard there. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, that's more like it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We see a drop in the forces. As we should. And our first one, as you can see. As we go down, that is our last. Awesome. Okay, now for the final evaluation. We go to results. Give us the new upstream. This should look tighter once we see it. Moment of truth. Awesome. Science is amazing. Yeah, we see that tighter turbulent section. Awesome. You'll love to see it. Okay, and now just for the final guys. Go back to your velocity contour. It's actually our pressure. Okay, screenshot. Switch to your velocity. Should kind of mimic your streamline. Awesome. Screenshot, guys. Okay. That concludes our five cases here for the flow around cylinder with different Reynolds numbers changing. Thank you for watching.